Welcome in, I'm Artris, and this week, let's talk about my favorite leader to come out of OP06, Vinsmoke Raju. This leader is a blue and purple leader that says once per turn on your turn, when one of your Dawn cards on the field is returned to your Dawn deck, draw one card. Now, at first, when I saw this leader, I didn't think it would be very strong. I didn't think that this leader would have a fighting chance against like Gekko Moria or Sakazuki or even Anel. However, I've been playtesting with it for the past couple of weeks, and honestly, this is one of my favorite decks to come out of the One Piece card game. There's just so much to it. Uh, there's a lot of efficiency with the deck itself. The way that you're supposed to play it is you're minusing your Dawn every turn, drawing cards, uh, protecting your units, and cheating out bodies for free. Honestly, this deck is way stronger than I think a lot of people give it credit for. And so I'm excited to take you through it and talk a little bit about Vinsmoke Raju. Now, before we get into the deck list, if you find anything in this video useful or informative, please make sure to drop a like and a sub. It helps out the channel immensely. I can't thank you enough for the support. And additionally, if you'd like to talk about the One Piece card game outside of the YouTube comments, make sure to join the Discord. The link is in the description below. So starting off, we have four Kaya. This is a very strong 2k counter in blue. It is an on play draw two trash two cards from your hand. Oftentimes you're going to be using this simply for a 2k counter as most of your 2k counters will be used for. However, there are some instances where you don't find some of your early game pieces and you can use the Kaya in order to draw a little bit further into the deck and then discard things that you may be able to bring back from your trash. Now, the whole way that this deck plays is you're supposed to be discarding cards into your trash and then bringing them back out with effects through minusing Dawn. And so you have no issues trashing cards because that's exactly where a lot of your cards should be. And honestly, this leader being blue and purple feels like a little bit of a color miss match it should be in my opinion like a purple black because you are playing so heavily with your trash however i think that color combination for rage you might be a little strong so anyway because we're in blue we are running kaya because we are able to draw and discard we're running two of the new charlotte puddings this thing is a menace i wish i could run more but honestly there's not a lot of open spots in this deck for kind of like some creativity so two puddings it is and it's an on play your opponent returns all of their hand cards to their deck and shuffles their deck then your opponent draws five cards so if your opponent has like 10 or 11 cards in hand we're looking at like maybe a uta or maybe like a sakazuki even an anel you can play this and then they have to discard their entire hand and then draw a fresh five, which can disrupt a lot of game plans uh, and can be quite the nuisance. Then we're running two of the Miss Double Finger. Now this one is actually mostly just a 2K. Uh, it is one that does come out of life, so you can get a body off of it. And in some instances, when you're going against like Red Purple Law, you may need to ramp up to get to your judge faster than normal. And so the double finger will allow you to ramp up uh, with the on play effect. So being able to trash a card from hand and then adding a Dawn card uh, and resting it uh, so that you ramp up a little bit faster. But typically you're not wanting to ramp up. This will be mostly used as a 2K. Then the bread and butter of the deck, the whole reason that this deck I think is extremely powerful in this meta is the Vinsmoke Ichiji combo. So now that the way that this deck works with the Vinsmoke Germa 6-6 archetype is that you are playing smaller bodies and then using the effect, the minusing Dawn effect on it to bring out a bigger body from the trash. And so Ichiji says, activate main, Dawn minus one, you may trash this character. If your leader has the Germa 6-6 type, you may play up to one cost seven Vinsmoke Ichiji from your hand or trash. So you're able to play this seven cost, which says on play, if you have equal to or less Dawn on your field than your opponent, give up to one of your opponent's characters, minus 2000 power for this turn, and this character gains rush. A very potent play that you can have going second is on your four Dawn turn, play down the Ichiji. On your first turn, you are able to trash out the other, the bigger Ichiji, and then you can cheat out this rush body on turn two. So you're swinging five with your leader and then you swing seven with this. Oftentimes though, you will save this for being able to trade into your opponent's characters. Uh, so that is a very strong effect. Uh, if you're familiar with how Whitebeard plays, if you had the seven cost ace, being able to minus 3,000 to two bodies was a huge tide turner for that deck. And I think that Ichiji, the seven cost Ichiji is definitely uh, of that same variety where you're able to trade into bodies if you'd like to. You can also nullify some of these blockers that are a kind of a hassle to get past in the meta, like Borsalino or Queen, uh, because now they're reduced down to a 4,000 power body. Next, we're running two of the eight cost Vinsmoke Judge. This is essentially like your boss monster in the deck. However, the way that I've played this deck, I don't 
play it out very often. I am minusing my Dawn enough times to get a couple of effects off during uh, some turns, and I don't know if Judge is necessary to win. There are times, though, where maybe you need to get to 8 Dawn so you can do a huge combo play. And so, talking about Judge, it's an on-play Dawn minus one. You may trash two cards from your hand, play up to four Germa 6-6 type character cards with 4,000 power or less from your trash with different names. The other effect is activate main once per turn, Dawn minus one, rest up to one of your opponent's Dawn cards, which that also is very handy uh, when you do need to rest some a Dawn, like against a Nami, for instance. But the big thing here is you're able to get out the smaller bodies, the smaller Germa 6-6 Vinsmoke family from the field, and then from there you can use their effects again to cheat out the bigger body. So essentially you're paying eight Dawn to bring this body out and then four others. But in this deck, I'm only running three of the Germa 6-6 Vinsmoke family types outside of Judge. So we'll get to that in a second. Uh, but otherwise, this is a huge value play on eight Dawn. Next, we're running four of the Vinsmoke Sora. This is a 2K counter that is also searchable in the deck. Uh, it is an on play. You may discard a card from your hand. If you have equal to or less Dawn on your field than your opponent, add to your hand up to one character card of 4,000 power or less that has the Vinsmoke family type from the trash. So there are times where you can play this down on the field if you're needing to get back one of the smaller Vinsmoke family cards so that you can bring out a bigger one. Uh, so it is a spot like searcher. If you have stuff in your trash, you need to get it back out it does recur that so that's very nice otherwise it is a 2k counter next i'm running three of the vinsmoke niji this is a three cost 3000 power it's an activate main dawn minus one you may trash this character if your leader has the germa 6 6 type you may play up to one cost five vinsmoke niji from your hand or trash and the five cost the big version of this is on play if you have equal to or less dawn in your field than your opponent choose one of the following KO up to one of your opponent's characters that cost two or less, or return up to one of your opponent's characters that cost four or less to the owner's hand. Both effects are amazing in this meta. You're able to either take out a Searcher uh, for the three Dawn that you've paid for the Niji, or you can also take out like a Rosinante blocker or bounce some of the blockers that are more annoying, like I talked about Borsalino, back to the opponent's hand. So oftentimes you'll see a Borsalino come down and you're wanting to just swing five with your leader, but you know it's going to get instantly blocked. So you play the Niji, you bounce it back, and then you swing in uh, demanding a counter or taking a life from it. So that's very nice. I think I would want to run four Three feels like a sweet spot for me though. Uh, I don't feel like I want to play this too often. There are some situations where I do need to bounce something or KO a smaller character, but for the most part, I'm just trying to get my HEG out on the field as much as possible. Then the other big piece of this deck is the Vinsmoke Reiju card. This is a two drop, 2000 power. Activate main, Dawn minus one. You may trash this character if your leader has the Germa 6-6 type. You may play up to one cost four Vinsmoke Reiju from your hand or trash. And the four cost Vinsmoke Reiju is on play if you have equal to or less Dawn on your field than your opponent. And if you have five or less cards in hand, draw two cards. So a really strong play here is being able to play down the smaller Reiju, and then use the effect immediately, draw two off of the Reiju effect for this, and then also draw one off of your leader ability. So you're drawing three cards in a turn for two Dawn, which is a huge value play. You can see how your hand gets really thick, really fast. And that's one of the reasons why I think this deck does really well against a lot of the meta is because you're playing out bodies for cheap, and then you're able to defend those bodies very easily because you're drawing cards and replacing it in your hand. You don't mind minusing Dawn constantly uh, because the other effects you're getting from it are so great. So that's why I think this deck is really strong. Now here's where I tend to differ in my list than some other people's lists. Instead of running the Yanji Vinsmoke card, which is a four cost blocker that's a 6,000 power body, I decided to run three queens. And the reason why I think queen is better in this meta for me is because there are enough things in this meta that will rest four cost blockers. Uh, there are things like Perona is able to just do it for free. You have a lot of things in yellow that can just rest, like the Amaru can just rest it. Uh, so oftentimes you'll be sitting at three Dawn and they play a Yamato for a Nell, uh, for example. They can just KO a, a four cost blocker real easily. Queen is a lot harder for a lot of these decks to handle. The extra cost is actually pretty big when it comes down to it. And on top of that, I think that this synergizes a little bit better in your deck than a Yanji, even though obviously the Vinsmoke type, German 66 type is the whole archetype of this deck. I think Queen definitely fits better. Now, if you were to look on online forums, a lot of people are saying, oh, Queen's not that great. You probably shouldn't run it. I think Queen's pretty good. So I will stick with it for now. But of course, I think you guys should take this deck list and uh, test it out yourself, play with it, see what you think. But overall, Queen's really good because it's a blocker on play Dawn minus one. Draw two cards and trash one card from your hand. 
And this normally is just a draw one card for most people, but in the Raju deck, it is a draw two card. It's a plus two. You're drawing two cards, you trash a card, which you want to do with this deck, and then you get to draw another card off of your leader ability. So you're drawing three cards in a turn, getting rid of one that you typically will want to get rid of anyway. And then now you have a blocker and now you have two extra cards in hand. If you're looking to do more of a budget build, I think that the Yanji is probably better overall. Next, we're running the Germa 66 Event Searcher, which is a main look at five cards from the top of your deck. Reveal up to one card with a type including Germa, other than Germa 66, and add it to your hand. Then place the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order. So this will be able to search out a lot of your pieces, which oftentimes uh, you will need to find some of these pieces very early and having a one dawn searcher is beautiful for this deck. The other thing is it has a trigger which says draw a card. Sometimes if it's in life, uh, you don't want a dead card in hand to come out of life. You can just replace this with something else. Then I'm running three Blast Breaths. I think this is also a tech that some people use, but some people also probably stray away from any kind of counter events. But I think that this event is really strong overall. It helps make sure that you are minusing your Dawn so that your leader ability or some of the other abilities on your, your characters are able to be played efficiently. Uh, and your opponent might not expect you to be able to counter out of some stuff, especially if you have a Blast Breath. Like a 4,000 power for one Dawn is really strong. Uh, and so that's why I'm running three. I like to see it at least once in a game and three pretty much guarantees that I will see it at least once in a game. And then the other thing that's extremely important for this deck is the stage. Uh, now some decks will rely on the stage like Kaido for instance. Rebecca kind of relies on the stage. However, in Reiju, I think you live and die by the stage. This is an activate main. You may discard one card, then rest the stage. Look at the top three cards of your deck and reveal it to one card with Germa in its types and add it to your hand. Then send the remaining cards to the bottom of your deck in any order. This is a pseudo searcher. Basically what you're doing with this is you are dumping the cards that are the bigger bodies, like uh, your four cost, the five cost, or the seven cost, and then replacing it with something else in hand. Then you are able to revive something from the trash afterwards. So this whole deck, I think, revolves around this stage. It's why I say you live and die by it. It's very important. I hard mulligan for this uh, as much as I can. If I don't see this uh, in my opening hand, then the second best option is having a Germa 6-6 to search it out. And then the third best option is having a Kaya to try to draw into it uh, very early in game. So that is something to keep in mind is that you want to see this stage as much as possible. The other thing to keep in mind with this deck in general, just some tips here, is if you have some of the bigger bodies, uh, like the Vinsmoke Reju, the four cost and the five cost Niji, it's okay to use them as counters. Like just counter out because you are discarding them to put them in the trash and then you can bring them back with the effects of their smaller counterparts. So make sure that you are doing that efficiently uh, and as much as possible, don't be afraid to do that. Make sure you keep your hand size around five if possible, especially if you have a Reju play coming up so that you can get the max value off of that. The other thing is, and I mentioned this with the double finger, if you're going against a deck that has a very hard counter for you, uh, like an RP Law, double finger is really good because you're able to ramp up faster to judge. And in the case where you're going against Red Purple Law, they are able to minus their Dawn a lot better than you. So you kind of have to play the opposite effect. Don't worry about your minusing Dawn effects. Try to get to your judge as soon as possible and then play out a bunch of bodies because once you spam the board with a bunch of bodies, it is harder for them to take care of a bunch of bodies rather than one at a time. So Red Purple Law is definitely going to be your hardest matchup and you will see it a lot in this meta because it got a lot better with some of the added tech that we've gotten, especially with I think the Rays Max. Now they have like essentially eight Gordons in their deck. So Red Purple Law is going to be a menace for this deck in particular. If you're going against a mirror, uh, try to go first, I believe. At least that's the way I play it, so that you can minus your Dawn first if possible. And even if you need to minus your Dawn with getting no effect, being able to prevent your opponent from getting their effects off, I think is worth it at the end of the day. So overall, though, I think other matchups in this meta you will do fine against. Like against Katakuri, I think that this deck does very well. Being able to swing seven early on at them with this Ichiji is a nightmare for them. It's hard for them to deal with this. Uh, the other decks that you might do well against is Anel, especially if you can go wide and then just get a bunch of 7k swings in. Now, and typically people say Anel is a good matchup against Reiju, but I think that Reiju actually has a pretty decent matchup there. Perona is a good one for you. Sakazuki is decent for you. Moria kind of is a little bit harder, but at the end of the day, I think if you pilot it right, I think you could probably pull off wins more than losses. And honestly, I think it does speak a lot to the pilot of whoever is using this deck. 
If you put a lot of practice into it, I think that you will probably do pretty well with this deck. Uh, it has a pretty decent matchup spread across the board. So I hope that people take this into consideration when playing it. I know that a lot of people are hard focused on the last uh, bit of rounds with Sakazuki before it's gone forever. I know people are wanting to play Moria because it's a really strong leader, but I think Vinsmoke Reiju is probably a secret S tier. I put it very low in the uh, ranking of my system, but then I played a lot of it since then. And I think that Reiju is, is a sleeper OP. I really do. And so I can't wait to play it in the sim. Let's take it into some games and see how it does. Alrighty, Katakuri. <sighs> fun, fun. Well, you typically want to go second against Katakuri, of course, to take away their curve and be able to play a seven drop Ichiji. But we are going first. So that is going to be a little bit rough for us. Of course, we do have stage. So let's just keep this and see what we can find. I think we can grab the Raju, the small Raju, and then the following turn, what we can do is go Germa Kingdom, play the big, or trash the big Raju, and then play the small one and get that value. Draw three from that. Really nice play there, of course. And then the following turn, ideally, we can find a seven cost Raju or Ichiji. I keep saying Raju. Play this down. We're not going to use it just yet. Let's do our attacks first because I don't know what might be in their life. We don't want to trigger anything quite yet. Already off to the triggers. Love it. <laughs> just Katakuri things. I think it's fine to grab a 2k here. Let's return and then let's play down the small Reiju. Get our value. We have double HEG, which is rough, of course, for us, but that's not the worst thing in the world. Now, if they go seven, we will take the seven. We'll counter out of the, the five that they might go here. And I imagine they'll play a pair of Sparrow for three and we can just bounce the Paro Sparrow back, do a nice tempo play, of course. But that's all dependent on what they do here. I'm just assuming like what is their ideal play or ideal curve. Yeah, they swing five, we'll counter out here. We're gonna get this back if we do play Niji. Of course though, oh, interesting. Uh, let's take one, let's just take one. Okay, three ni three Ichijis is not what we want here. Ooh. Ha uh, this is a tough, this is very tough because what we could do, I feel like we have to just throw down the pressure, right? I think we just do it. I'm trying to think about like, what's the ideal play here? The ideal play would be to bounce the Kiku Nojo and then get rid of the Satori and get a hit in. But I don't think we can do all of those guaranteed. I don't think we can clear the Satori. So in order to guarantee we clear the Satori, I'm going to use the minusing effect, swing the Reju into it. Swing five into them. They'll probably counter out of this. And then swing seven into them. And that one they can't, or it probably wouldn't counter out of. Not that they can't. They take both, that's even better for us. If they take this one and then counter out the next one, that's amazing, that's what we wanna see. Okay, they counter out of that one with a 2K. Alrighty. And we'll pass the turn. Now, they'll probably go after the Raju here and that's fine, that's why I grabbed the smaller one off of my search because I thought maybe I could recur it the following turn if I dump my hand here to save some of these bodies, especially if I can save the Ichiji with their Kiku Nojo, from their Kiku Nojo or from their leader attack, then we can play the Reiju and refill our hand the next turn. We do have a fair amount of 2Ks, which feels good. Uh, the only downside is we do have a fair amount of bricks, which we can't get rid of fast enough. We're not gonna counter out of this one. I think we just let it die. And then we will counter out of this one. So we go, I want to keep this. I do want to keep this. Huh. Eh, we can get it back. That's fine. Let's be smart and efficient with our counters. That is fine. We're at five right now. Hmm. Let's go. What is a smart play? I think the smart play is this. I'm going to use the card action to play the Ichiji, get it back. This will prevent them from having a double attack 
Or it might. I don't know. They might counter out of this. Let's see what they do. Let's see what they do. Okay. So we probably still will have to worry about a double attack from the Cracker. Gosh. I was trying to do that so I wouldn't have to worry about a double attack, but I'm going to have to worry about a double attack, and it looks like they might have another trigger here. This Katakuri is absolutely just bonkers. Wow, pulling off all kinds of crazy stuff. And that's fine. That's expected. That's to be expected from Katakuri. They're at 8 Dawn, so they probably go like 5, 7, 6, 5, and then play a Big Mom. They could just pile a bunch of Dawn on and try to get us down as low as possible, which is also... A possibility here. Honestly, we were in a really bad spot <laughs> based off of based off of like their triggers. So um Yeah, let's take this one. Let's see if we can counter to the next two. And I'm gonna take my life. I'm going to I'm going to trash this life. Okay. Let's go here. Let's go 7, just ask for cards out of hand. Okay. So that's fine for us. Huh. This might be good see what we get here oh oh that's even better that is even better uh let's go that's even that's rough though do we go five let's go five let's go five test the waters see what we get out of it every life has been a trigger i was about to say every life has been a nuts trigger insane Do they have enough to counter out of an eight? Are we feeling lucky here? Let's see what they have. Let's see what they have. The tension is so high right now. <laughs> oh, they don't. Okay, they might just have counter. We'll take the chance. We'll swing eight. Let's see if they have it. Whoo! Man, every life they had was a counter. That was extremely risky. I was carried hard by the Achiji and probably misplayed some of that, but I don't know if swinging into the Kiku Nojo early was good, giving that giving them that extra life. But yeah, this was a very close match. So <sighs> against Yamato, I still want to go second, even though they will swing pretty hard here. Uh, let's mulligan this hand because we don't see what we want. This is a decent starting hand for us. We just need to find the four cost. If we can find the four cost, I think we're in a decent spot. We can only grab the Niji though, and then we'll pass. Now, we'll probably have to take some damage here because we don't have enough to counter out, and that's fine. Let's use this to draw. Uh, let's do this. Grab one in its place. Swing five. And then we'll play down the smoke. The Vin, the Vin smoke, Ichiji. Play down the smoke. Is this a trigger? Gosh. I say all the yellow decks I've played tonight have gotten pretty insane triggers. No targets, and then we'll swing seven. We can actually go back to back Ichiji here, which is pretty nice for us. We might have to counter out hard, though, if they decide to go, like, all in. We'll keep one of these Reijus if we can. Okay. Are they going after the Ichiji? What the hell? It's actually insane. <laughs> Uh, we'll go here, we'll grab this, we'll return. Seven. Five. Grab another 2k. Play down another Chiji. We'll play this down. No targets. Another 2k. We have so many 2ks in hand. If they decide to go all out here... We might actually be able to defend it. Them doing double Amaru is pretty troll. Tr another... Oh my god. This is... person's insane. Yeah. 
They, I don't know what they're doing, but I think that might be a strat for Yamato against Reiju is just to go as hard as you can because I am at only four life. But the problem is I drew a bunch of cards. And so there's no way that I didn't draw some 2Ks to get out of that one. Uh, I have seen, by the way, I have seen Yamato's do this strategy against Reiju where they just go all out. They don't even play bodies on the field. They just go straight at face. And do you have the counters and pressure hard? It sometimes works, and then other times where I do have the pressure with the seven cost Ichiji and then drawing a bunch of cards, uh, sometimes it doesn't. So yeah, I typically would advise not to play like this as a Yamato player, but sometimes it works. Who knows? Red Purple Luffy is one that I don't really expect to be in this meta, and I would imagine that it probably does pretty well against Reiju, because 6k leaders are still rough no matter who you're going against. Chose to go second, which usually they like to go first, which is kind of strange. We'll keep the hand, we'll play a German Kingdom down, and then get rid of the other one. We'll grab a Reiju out of it. Pass the turn. Next turn, we can play down the small Reiju, of course. Let's get rid of this one and grab a... There's not really anything for us to bounce back to their hand, so let's just grab another Reiju here. Swing six. And then we'll play down this Reiju and draw three. With Luffy, usually the first six that you throw at them, it's kind of hard for them to decide, oh, do I take this? Typically, I would advise you take it, though. All right, so we have a Ichiji for the next turn set up, ready to go. I think we counter out of this one. Why not? Like, let's stay as healthy as possible against them, because if we are down too low of life, there is no way that we are able to protect ourselves. Ah, trashing cards does suck. But they trash cards. Oh, they did trash one that I wanted. Mm, that does suck. Okay, we'll take a hit then. We'll take a hit. That's fine. Let's get rid of the Sachiji. Uh, get the Germa 6-6. Oh, uh, do they want... You know what's kind of troll here is that I, I actually want to do this. I think I want to do this. Return this, and I'm going to bounce this back to their hand. Yes. I'm going to bounce this back to their hand. I don't care if they play it again. They're minusing Dawn, and they're not progressing their board state. And also, they are not progressing their Dawn, which is good for us. And the next turn, we can swing with the Niji. If they trash stuff out of our hand, so be it. It happens. We will actually, we, they, we're at six, so it doesn't, they can't even do that. Perfect for us. Okay. Oh boy. We can bounce this Bart back to hand. Love to see it. We can also go Ichiji as well if we would so choose. But I think just swinging a couple of sixes at them is pretty good. Pretty good. We're going to swing one, two, three, and then play down this Niji, bounce the Bart back to hand. So it's one less thing swinging at us, thankfully. Of course, you want to do that at the very end so that they don't have the counter to be able to counter out of. Three 6k attacks is pretty strong against Red Purple Luffy. They countered out of all of them. That's fine for me. It's less cards for them to be able to counter out of later. So let's send this back to hand, draw a card, and pass. We are looking good here. The next turn, we can do six. We can do six, 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 six. If these uh, all stay alive, they decide to go face. And then we can also swing in with the Ichiji. Pretty nice. They are at nine Dawn, though. So if they have a new gate, then all of that gets thrown out the window. Let's just see what they have, though. My assumption is that they do have a new gate. If they're on 9 Dawn and they protected themselves so hard, I would imagine that they have a new gate this turn. How do they have seven cards in hand? How are they able to draw so much? It's insane. They took one. They played... Oh, because they bounced two back to hand. That's why. <laughs> How did I forget? How did I forget? Ooh, Kaido. Kaido is definitely interesting here. I'm surprised they didn't do the standing one. 
They should have gotten rid of the standing Niji swung into everything. That's kind of strange. All right, we'll counter out. We'll go six here. I'm just going to ignore this Kaido. There's not much I can do about it. I'm not going to use my German Kingdom just yet because I want to see what I draw off of it with the Achiji so then I can decide what I really want to do. So let's go six here. They do have the Law Blocker. So they probably counter out with that. No. Okay. Ah, cool. That's good for us. Let's see what we get. Reiji would be good here. Another Achiji wouldn't be bad either. They do have less Dawn than us, though. Uh, so it doesn't really do much for us. So let's just pass. This is the one time where Red Purple Luffy is actually lower Dawn than us, which is kind of strange. I was expecting the rush. Not going to lie. And then when it wasn't rushed, I was like, what? Got to count your Dawn. Don't forget. We have another Chiji in here. So what we can do the next turn is we can just go... He's probably going to go 11 here. I would imagine... Go six at face. Yeah, sure, that's fine. That's fine. We'll be at seven dawn, so we can actually just do. Oh, we don't even have to. We can just do this. Let's counter out here. Put the blocker down. That's why they didn't get rid of it. Let's do this. Didn't draw anything. Unlucky. We can go. Six here. My guy is literally his counter out of everything we've thrown at him so far, except for the first hit. So he's got to be running low on resources at this point. Has to be. Okay. Once again, there's no reason in order there's no reason for me to swing at this Kaido. No reason whatsoever. We'll play the Rage You down, draw. Draw two more cards. Hopefully something good here. That's not bad. The judge is not great, but that's fine. I wonder if we're able to protect Ichiji. I doubt we are. It's also a 9 Dawn. Is it another Kaido? Do you think he has another Kaido in hand? That would be pretty devastating for us, I suppose. Okay. At least it's not another Kaido. At least there's that. Depending on how they swing, it's like we might stand a chance here. 7, 8. Does he go 9? If he just goes 8, then I think we're fine. We could protect it, but I don't know if it's worth. I think we just let it die. Oh, we're grabbing the 2k for sure. Um, Ask for a 1k here. Do we have another way to draw? We do. We have another way to draw here, which is really strong for us. We can go the Reju, play two down. Draw three. Oh, bunch of 2Ks. Love seeing it. Uh, let's just go seven. And go seven again. And I'm pretty sure we're able to defend our units on the crack back here. They have not hit us on our life at all other than that first turn. They've been trying to board clear, which I understand. That's probably good for them to do that but we're in a comfortable spot right here where they are at 10 dawn if they want they could do the time walk luffy but what do they do like how do they win here because if they don't win here like if they can't get me down to zero there's no way they protect themselves with three cards in hand i think that they are trying to go for lethal
Yeah, there's... <laughs> we just get a 2k out of life. Yeah, there's... Uh, I think we're fine. Do we bait them? Do you think that we can bait them into going all in and then show them the true power of drawing cards? Power of friendship, baby. They go six here, seven. Can we go all out? What is our max power? We go nine, 11, never forget, 13, 15, 17, 19, 20, 21. We can counter out of a 21 and they can't hit that. So yeah, we'll just take it. We're just letting them go all out. Yeah. Let's see it. Go all in. Go all in, baby. What? Dang. They didn't go all out. What is this? What is this thing right here? Another Zoro. Okay. We were ready. We were ready to go. So all we have to do is swing up by four. So we just swing 11 with the Ichiji and we win. GG. That was a close one. That was the Kaido threw me off. Kaido definitely threw me off there. I didn't expect a Kaido. Uh, there are versions that do run Kaido. I remember that I showed a red purple Luffy at one point that had Kaido in it. And I don't know if it's the right move nowadays since you have the 10 drop time walk Luffy, but it threw me off and it definitely uh, put some pressure on my toes. That's for sure. All right, Perona should be a decent matchup for us. Let's go second. And I think that this hand is actually really strong. Now, of course, they're going to be able to rest or raid you and KO it, but we don't mind our units being KO'd because we can just revive them from the trash. Uh, really good for us. Let's play the down the German Kingdom. And I think it's fine to just toss out the raid you, see what we get here. I think we get the Ichiji. We grab the Ichiji because we can actually just play it next turn. So, yeah. That's pretty good for us. Now, I do want to get rid of this baby five, which is unfortunate that it is there. If we do get a three cost Niji, I might just consider playing that instead. But I think the play here is just go after baby five and then swing seven at Perona. Okay, that's fine. Crash this. Well, speak of the devil, we do get that. Uh, we'll be able to KO this though, so it's fine. It does feel bad swinging into it, but what are you going to do? Bring the pressure, swings, mm, excuse me, swing seven. Indigestion there. Uh, we'll pass the turn. We'll hold on to the judge. And of course, we have too many kingdoms here. So we're going to toss one of the kingdoms probably to get something better. Unless we could just toss an EG. We can just counter out with an EG this turn, though, if we need to. So. I think we're in a good spot. I think we're in a good spot here. We kind of have to pressure them hard before they do get to their eight or 10 dawn turn for their, oh, they're going after the Uchiji? Oh, darn it, darn you. Darn you, it's fine. <laughs> we're okay, we're fine. Oh, we don't need this many judges, but we also, don't mind them. Grab this one. So they used a couple of resources to get rid of our GG, but we're just going to get it back right now. Oh, we have another one ready to go. Ready to go, baby. Now, if they do get rid of this, it's fine. Not the end of the world. We can bounce back the Ryuma to their hand. We can also draw a lot if we'd like to. Swinging up to a seven is a little bit difficult for them. They do have the Ryuma, so it does cost one Dawn, but being able to swing up to this does suck. Of course, they might just be using their abilities to get rid of it, KO it, trash it, whatever it may be. But we do get a couple of looks the next turn. There are, There is like a world. <laughs> Another Suru, wow, okay, cool. There's a world where they do go like, uh, we do go like toss this Ichiji, play a German Kingdom, 
toss something and then do whatever. That's fine. Toss this one, grab this one, play this, grab this, return, swing five. They have to counter out of this. <laughs> they have to. Uh, swing seven. Let's go! This feels good. They are going to be at their eight dawn turn this next turn. So let's just hope it's not a kid. If it is a kid, we are going to be in a little bit of trouble. If it is a Gecko Moria, that's not the worst thing in the world for us either. They will probably play down a Ryuma and a Rosinante blocker. Maybe the blocker standing. But then we do have an answer for the blocker standing if that's the case. We're sitting good on counters right now. We have a Blast Breath, and then we have two 2Ks, and then a couple of 1Ks as well. Overall, I'm not feeling too rough here. If they decide to swing into the Achigi, we can protect it. If they decide to go and use their Minusing effects again, I think we're gonna be okay. Me seeing like a Suru come down is one of the best things in the world for me swinging sevens, because I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> this means that's one less seven for them that they can counter out of. They might just go hard here. Okay. I think they're about to be disappointed. Yeah. I think they're about to be disappointed. Oh, baby. Uh, do we take it? Nah. We counter out. <laughs> Who am I kidding? Who am I kidding? Okay. Rosanante. We could. We could. Uh, let's do this. We'll go seven. And I think we go seven again. Okay. We don't go seven again. I mean, we do go seven again. Sorry. We go seven again. I'm just thinking, like, what could we do here to win? We can't. So we just protect ourselves the best we can we're gonna have to discard a lot of cards here unfortunately it is what it is but we have a blast breath so it's not the end of the world here so we'll see what they do if they go like nine that's gonna ask for a lot of cards out of hand unfortunately they might just go seven what would be their ideal play it's definitely not the 10 drop. It's definitely not that. Hmm. They could load up on the X Drake, Ryuma, and their leader. Okay. I think this is fine. Three. I think we can protect against a couple of hits like this. Go seven again. The way they have to divide this up with the Suru and like their Perona, two, three, four, five, six. They'd have to go six, seven in order for this to work for them. And we can counter out of the six. This is why I think Blast Breath is so important here. Do they just go after the Uchiji here? Clear the board? That's fine. Now, do we go for the win? I think we can, right? Can we go for eight? I think we can just go for like a... Go seven first, see what they do. Go five here, counter out one. Yeah, and then we go eight. Yeah, that was, uh, I mean, this is how I think the matchup goes. You kind of just rush them down before they can play down their big boss monsters. They did have a Gecko Moria the entire time. They should have just played that, in my opinion. But I think clearing the Achigi was a little bit too, uh, they were head too headstrong on that one. I don't think they need to be able to do that. So, oh well. It was, uh, I think this is how the matchup goes.
So what do you guys think? Rage is pretty strong, right? I think that this leader is, gosh, I can't wait to play it. It's one of the best budget decks to come out of 06. Probably just one of the best decks to come out of, like I said, One Piece in a while. It's a little bit unique to how it's supposed to be played. Obviously, you're minusing Dawn constantly, but you're drawing a lot of cards. So if you like drawing cards, if you like graveyard or trash recursion, I think that this deck is definitely one you should explore probably should try to get some of the cards before they start spiking up in price before people figure out that Raiju is actually a pretty good leader overall. Uh, I know that there have been some people talking about it, so I imagine that the prices will start to spike here shortly. Of course, the four-cost Raiju, uh, the, this one right here, is already spiked up a little bit because Red Purple Law runs Raiju, but if you're looking to run this leader... I recommend testing it out first, of course, seeing what you like. Try the Yanji out, see if it feels better than the Queen, uh, and let me know how that goes. Uh, overall, though, I think that this is probably one of my favorite decks. This will be my deck that I take to locals to, to like, relax. Like, I'll be taking Anel to regionals or, like, the Treasure Cups, uh, and probably locals to get some practice in, but if I want to relax and have a good time and still also win and feel like I'm doing a good job, I think Raiju is a really, really strong deck. I think it rewards the pilot, so hopefully you guys... Have some fun with it. Uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think about Raiju uh, and what you would like to see next as far as the leader goes. I'll probably look to do Gecko Moria or Perona pretty soon. Uh, I'm excited to play test some of those leaders from OPO6. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.